Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're going through the new features in Tableau Prep 2021.1. Now, Tableau Prep is sort of sneaky because they actually update it every single month um, with new features. And so it sort of doesn't really follow the traditional release cycle that we're used to seeing for desktop and server. So that's why it says here Tableau 2021.1.2 because this is actually the second release of a 2021.1 release for Tableau Prep. Now, there's only two things to really talk about here. I'm looking at Tableau's own documentation. If you don't know how to get to this page check out my other videos on how to find out all the new features in tableau um one thing they did is they removed the driver for amazon redshift so if you're installing tableau prep for the first time and you use amazon redshift it's actually been removed as part of the default installation process if that's something that you use you're going to need to go and install that driver yourself they have a link to the downloads page which tableau have on a whole load of databases so that's the best place to go now the other new feature they added is the ability to write to excel now when I first saw this, I, I got really excited because I have expectations coming from other tools like Alteryx. And so I sort of just jumped right in and I tried to do a couple of things and actually a few things caught me out. So in this video, I'm going to be co covering those things and we're going to sort of look at some of the exceptions as well that to be aware of. Okay. So first of all, let's get into Tableau prep and let's just start creating a flow. Actually, in fact, what we're going to do is use one of the sample flows because we don't need to really go through the process of building a flow. We can just use one of these sample flows and change the outputs to suit our need. So in this flow, we have a basic set of data coming from different regions, it's essentially being aligned, cleaned together, then it's being unioned, and then we have the returns data that's being joined on uh, a little bit further down. And then there's a couple of bit, there's a bit more sort of data prep going on here in clean set number two. We then have quotas and uh, targets, and then essentially we have some sort of uh, output here that sort of uh, analyzes the output. So this is a very simple flow, but it covers sort of the traditional things you might do in a business when you're collecting data from different regions and different teams. Now, one of the things I'd love to do is export this back out to Excel. Up until today or up until 2021 was released, when we use the file output, the only file options we got was a Tableau hype file and a CSV. And now you can see here, if I just highlight where I'm looking, uh, you can see here that we now have three files. So essentially we have Excel and a comma separated values file and uh, an extract file, which is a .hyper, okay? So that's really good to have those options now. It just saves you having to add that additional step of opening a CSV in Excel and then putting everything into the sheets. But let's go ahead and let's just try and uh, set this up. So first of all, I'm gonna change this particular output to write to Excel. So what we'll do is I'll change the location to somewhere that's easy to find on my machine. I'll go to my desktop and I'll select this folder, which is called output to prep, click accept, and that we go. We're pretty much ready to go. Now, the thing we need to do is change this to an Excel file. So I'll click uh, XLS and then it'll ask us which worksheet. Now, because there's no Excel file in that folder at the moment, um, there's no worksheet to choose. So I'll just call this sheet one um, as you do in Tableau and then I'll say create a new worksheet. Okay, I'll select create table. Okay, and don't forget these options work across different data systems. So when you create a table, it gets rid of the one that's there and puts a new one and append will simply add data to the bottom of the existing data set and replaces like a hybrid essentially what they're going to do is if the table exists it's going to replace the data that's in there entirely but if it doesn't exist it's going to create it so create table sort of creates it every single time and replace will do sort of a hybrid of, of create and replace at the same time if that makes sense okay so um in this case we're going to choose create we'll try replace a little later on so you can see the behavior and that's it we've pretty much got our standard uh example there and i'm just going to hit run flow just so you can see this working so here we are outputting to superstore sales xlsx and as that outputs, you even get a little dynamic counter that shows you the rows being outputs. Now, what I will do is I will open up my finder window um, just so that we can get to this folder here. So if I just uh, do this and let's go to a list view so we can just see the file there. So Superstore Sales uh, XLX. Let's open that file now that it's been written. Um, it's finished in the background. You can just see that it says done there. And if I bring that back into my window, you'll see that we have it in an Excel file, which is great. Uh, we've got sheet one as I named it and that's 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 working great. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up another sheet and I'm gonna call this sheet two, okay? And notice I've created this in Excel rather than uh, you know in, in Tableau Prep. So we're just gonna leave that as that and then we're just gonna hit save and now that's ready to go. And now we're gonna close 
uh, Excel and we're going to close this window here and close this window there and make sure that's done. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the second table to look for that second sheet. So let's go ahead again and go back to my desktop, select the output prep folder. And um, I'm going to actually select uh, this folder and hit OK. Um, you can't actually select the file because this is the option asking you where you'd like to save the file. It's not the option asking you what file you'd like to save. So hit accept. Then down here, you get to choose the file type, say so XLSX. Okay, so we're now pretty much you know, ready to go. We've got Supersource Sales XLXX. Now, when I click on this drop down, you can see that I can search here um, and I can, I can try typing sheet two. Um, I need to make sure that my Excel file is actually closed. So I'm gonna close Excel entirely and I'm just gonna select, uh, I'm gonna try and type in sheet two here and just see if that works. Um, and it says create a new worksheet. So what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna create that. I'm gonna just create a new worksheet called sheet three. Okay, so now we have a new worksheet called sheet three. And this is where I thought the options would allow me to do uh, something sort of different. So um, you can see here that the append to field uh, uh, options is, is selected. We're gonna ask it to create a table. The reason I've done that is because if I append to table, it's going to look for the table and there's no sheet three there. So you can see here in the middle that uh, prep is telling you that there's no match so the field is ignored. So this would actually output nothing. Um, if I switch over here to uh, create a table, you'll see that it's basically going to go ahead and assume that these are the fields and columns that I'd like in my data set. So it's gonna create them for me and a replace will do the same thing. Let's go ahead and select replace and you'll see here that actually replace wants the fields to be there. Um, but in essence, uh, I'm hoping it would create the field because that's that's sort of what it says. It says if the table doesn't exist, it's created when the flow is first run, okay? So we can choose create or replace, but in this case, Okay, so I'm gonna choose create just so that we have a nice sort of standard data set. And so now what we're doing is we're running the annual figures here. We're just gonna hit run flow and we're gonna see what happens. Now, you'll see this, outputs with the same names already exist. Do you want to replace them? So interestingly, it's open up the file and it's basically saying, look, there's already a sheet three. Before I run this file, let's go look at that folder and just see what it actually says. So let's go in here and open up this file. We'll just minimize this a little bit and uh, wait for this Excel file to open and we'll check what's actually in the file because we haven't run this flow to put out this data yet. And so you'll see here that there is there is no sheet three here. So um, it's slightly weird how this is working. It's def definitely the right location. It's definitely the right file. And for some reason it thinks it's a sheet three even though it hasn't really been created. So I just wanted to show you that just before uh, we, know we went anywhere else. Okay, so now you've seen me run the separate flows. Now what we're going to do is run them both at the same time. So you can see here, we've set this first one up, we've set the second one up. Now let's go ahead and run this through properly. So if I just hit this top play button, it's actually gonna run through both uh, files. So let's go ahead and do that. You'll see here that it says running query, generating rows, and um, we'll wait for it. I have Excel open. I don't think I have the file open though. So this should complete, correct. It's completing perfectly fine. Let's wait for this to finish. And uh, this one is probably taking a little longer because it's a little bit more rows. So hit done. So let's go back to our Excel file and double click on that. And what we should see is three sheets. Sheet two we should remain untouched because this is the one that it didn't see. Uh, Tableau Prep wasn't seeing this field when I was searching for it. Uh, sheet three, which is the aggregated view. And then sheet one, which is the full view of all our sales, which has basically been recreated. So you can see that it's writing to both files really, really nicely. Now, I have to be honest, there's a, there's a few things I have to sort of mention here because the first time I tried this, I had a little bit of a quirk where it wasn't doing both files at the same time. So um, this behavior, I, th I think can only be either a bug or some sort of exception, but I, I was only able to make it happen twice. And then when I've tried to recreate the scenario I thought was causing it, it just didn't happen again. So definitely something to be aware of. If it's not working correctly, you know what? Close prep, open up prep again, and just try and see if that works properly. The other thing to make sure you do is you set up these uh, options here on the left-hand side correctly, okay? So you need to make sure that you really, really 
paying attention to what's going on here. Let's say you created the same Excel net, uh, file, but instead you have them in two separate folders. You're gonna get two separate files, okay? It's not gonna create them in the same place. So if I point this location to one place and then in the other output, I point it to another place, you'll get two files called the same thing with sheets in them called sheet one and sheet three, but there'll be two separate files in different places, okay? So that's just something to be aware of and something to look out for. So it's a nice quality of life improvement. If you're using Excel a lot, you need to be sending Excel files to people and you don't want to be sending CSVs. And this is a nice uh, sort of way around that. Now, there are some uh, ha issues with Excel. It does have a row limit if you're using Excel in a sort of desktop uh, environment. So if you're sending lots and lots of data in a, in a, you know, in a flexible way and the CSV is typically the way you get around that limit, then CSV will still become useful for you. But otherwise, Excel is a really nice quality of life improvement. This is a useful uh, thing if you are maybe just creating reports that don't need visualization you just need numbers on a, on a table and you just need it done quickly prep is a great way of doing that and you can sort of start creating these sheets and sending them out to your colleagues so they can then do their own analysis on it if that's the case but ideally you'd want to be doing that inside of the tableau ecosystem okay thanks very much for watching this video and i'll catch you in the next one and um, be sure to check out my website we've got lots and lots of videos on things like tableau functions uh, on the home page you've got the 2021 playlist uh, sort of as a headline item you can see all the other videos on uh, the the features that I've already made and always be sure to go out to the playlist page where you can see some of the other playlists that I've already created on YouTube but now also live on this site covering lots of features across lots of different um, uh, capabilities in the Tableau platform so be sure to check it out. Until the next video thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one.